Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm quite clearly outside. I wanted to make the most of the sunshine, plus I have a lot of things that I need to spread about not enough space on my floor inside so anyway this video is one which I asked about on Instagram I asked on a poll whether you would like this or not and the majority of people said yes that they would really enjoy this I'm basically just gonna walk you through my like A-level textiles officially the name of the course is art and design brackets textile design so I'm just gonna call it textile design and yeah we'll get on with it my first year work was based on the subject of organic I started off by basically just doing almost I mean it's not a mind map it's an observational drawing of a skull and I thought at the time that I was going to really tune it into my interest in archaeology and then ended up going off a completely different tangent and it's definitely best that you don't decide what you want to do like as soon as you get your topic because take it from me it doesn't work and I did that for my second module and only got a B so there, there is a real difference in the grades you achieve when you start with kind of your end point. Yeah I've got this page we've got basic basic ideas and then my next page I continued with the observational drawing of the schools and did them in different techniques so this one is really deep detailed shading and then wax resist on the colours so I've used wax crayon and batik and then watercolour over the top this one is exactly the same but black and white so this you can see the wax here and then I bled inks as well so like literally felt it pens bled the ink the next page got like uh, my glasses are also far too big for my head like the, my head is a pea head it just doesn't fit normal size clothes clothes head garments okay so you can't, the thing with these is, they were supposed to be all different techniques, but they do actually end up with not being able to tell the difference between them. So I was told to put like an overlay and redo the techniques clearer individually and just have it as like an extra sheet of paper, which was fine. It didn't take very long. The next page is just your again techniques and one of the biggest things about getting a high grade at particularly the first half of a level like the as is demonstrating that you can do all of these techniques and then matching them up to your subject in retrospect i should have just done a voiceover more research and this is actually on my first trip ever to oxford i took all of these photos and ended up with a photography page and even the background is like my photographs so I've shown and written um, lots of writing about the fact that I can manipulate pictures like I used a fake photoshop to blend the photos together and overlay them and I was using artifacts but tried to get ones which were organic because that was the subject this one's actually one of my favorite so it doesn't look fantastic with with the, I actually can't see the stream, so I don't know if it's on there. But with the bulb, it's like a husk of wheat. It's called, um, what is it called? Continuous line drawing. And basically, you just don't take the pen off the paper, so you just keep going, and it's really fun to do. And it actually comes out with some really nice drawings, uh, whether you can draw or not, actually. One of the main things with textiles is making sure that you've got artist research pages, and you want probably at least five different artists that you have gone into detail on so this was my first ever artist research page and I don't know if you can see how sparkly that is it basically screams 12 year old white girl which isn't really the vibe you want to give off in your A-level 
uh, work, but hey ho, that's what I did. If I then turn to my A2 work and find my first artist research page, I'm hoping you can see the difference. It's a lot more minimalistic. So this was like March, and then I've got a sample under here where I have like recreated his work myself. And it's just basically a lot less childish, which is what you want to go for. You want professional. And what I did do well in first year was experimenting with the sewing machine techniques. So if you look at her work, it's all very layered up. And I did that with this picture here, used a viewfinder, and then did it basically on the sewing machine. This is all free embroidery, you take the feed dog down and then do it in circles instead of going in straight lines and you can basically draw anything. And it turned out to be my favourite technique ever and I did it all the time, but that's okay. I then continued to do samples, so like this is another one. Again, flowers. So now I've moved away from kind of archaeology and I'm going into flowers and plants and that's fine because if you develop your ideas, that, that's not a bad thing. You don't want to stick to the same thing the whole time. I didn't do as much sampling in second year. I focused more on artists. And what I found with moving from AS to A-level is that they definitely, in the mark scheme, want more of you looking at artists and recreating their style and doing your own designs with hints of their style than just making random shit on the sewing machine and saying it's a sample. For the sampling page, this one was fun. I basically burned lots of fabric. Finally come to my second artist research page. Bear in mind that this is only my second and we're like halfway through the sketchbook. Whereas in A level, I've now got one, that's number one, Dawn Thorne. Number two is Ed Fairburn, and then number three, Stephanie Ledeau. Three artist research pages with a sample that I've done in Stitch there already, and I'm like five pages in. I actually really, really love this page. The artist was Cass Holmes, and Again, I can't see the screen, but I hope it's on there. And as you can see in the background, I've kind of, I've worked his work into the background by doing my own sample there, because you have to keep making samples of the artists, but you have to get creative about it. So instead of just making a piece and like sticking it to a page, I've done it as the background of the artist research page. And it's doing things like innovatively like that, that they get you the high marks because it just shows that you're really thinking about what you're doing and you're not just sticking stuff down, you're really processing it and planning it and taking the time to get the right composition, etc. Wow, okay, I didn't realise how far through I actually was. I've only got, I think, three artists in first year, which is fine for AS, but for A-level you need to at least double that. So I'm now moving on to stitching techniques. which is getting myself ready for my final piece. So I already know that I'm gonna do a big stitch piece. I've decided that I'm not making like a dress or anything. It's too much, too much effort for two little techniques that are gonna be on it. Because particularly for AS, they judge it based on the amount of techniques that are on your final piece, the, the way it links to all of your artists, the way you've developed your theme into the artist's work, and then relayed it as your own. And so I have mainly gone off these artists who layer up fabric, draw on top, um, collage buttons and different stitching techniques in together. And yeah, that's what I've run with. So this is my uh, final design page. And I can actually show you my final piece because it's on the wall. Uh, yeah, this. So these are my final designs. I actually went with this one in the end and that is currently above my fireplace so I can go and take you to that one. 
in a second. And then I created them like mini versions of possible final pieces and then made this but really really big at this point you don't just want a final piece you want some samples that can go along with it and be framed so when i go through my a level stuff properly in a second i'll show you what i mean by that one thing that i didn't do very well in as was compare my artists so yeah i got high marks i got i think 90 2 UMS, something like that, 94 UMS. If I wanted full UMS, I should have done more of these. So this is an artist comparison. I don't know how well it's gonna show up on the camera, but basically you compare your artists together. Um, and if I wanted a better grade, I should have done more of these. So compared all three artists, compared more than just Nisa Kylie and Cass Holmes and actually integrated it into my work because obviously this document is literally just shoved in at the end. It carries no significance whatsoever and the people marking it just won't know like where it goes. So you need to do a whole page dedicated to comparing them and it's much better as you will see from what I'd learned from my mistakes. I started with a topic of Indian influences. I, again, I don't know if that's focused, but yeah, my title that I, I could choose from like six was Indian influences. This was my initial research page, basically just a mind map but glorified. And I went straight from that title, Indian influences, to looking at portrait photography because I was really interested in the photography of the the rituals and Hinduism. So I've got this with a little drawing there. I then went from that to exploring a different area which was aerial photographs. And then I've got a sample there as well that I made on the sewing machine. All these pictures. So like the other one, I'm building it up, but it's a lot more complex in terms of I'm exploring ideas whilst doing the technique instead of just doing techniques, if that makes sense. On my A2, we'd got to this page and I'm already three artists down. So this is artist number three. I've got a sample for each one and I go on the next page and I've got another artist, Francoise, nearly. So this is again a double page spread. I've got a sample here that I'd done from magazine cutouts where I've essentially copied. Mm. Um, I did it in acrylics here and then made it in magazines there using this stencil that I drew. Um, so I've got that. And then if you lift up these flaps, my artist comparison is there. So. Like I said, it's integrated onto the page, which just makes it so much more me meaningful, I guess. Like, whoever's marking it can see where I'm coming from. Get what I mean with the comparisons, why I've moved from one to the next one. Then I go on to another research page. So I've gone right back to the beginning, uh, to back to my portrait photography, and looked into the festival of So I've got like photographs, the big rice up there. And essentially it's just a way of my book flowing back to my other ideas because I've looked at artists who did portraiture now I'm looking back at the portraiture of India and I did this isn't specific artist but it counts as an artist research because they're a collection of paintings so I looked at the Radha Krishna paintings I don't know what's under this flap but oh more yeah and then again this is another comparison here that I've printed out. So I've done more and more than I did last year. And basically this, this project was my highest scoring project. So this is the one to show you basically. Then after I looked at Kumbamela, I decided that I really, really liked this photo. And this photo is gonna be have what I took the most inspiration from for my final piece. I then made that photo myself. I'm gonna get it. Where are my glasses? 
They're on my head. Ow! I then made that photo on a sewing machine. So I've got it here in a frame. This, the hair is all free embroidery. The face is free embroidery and watercolour. I've got wax resist here. More free embroidery for the beard. And then like almost collage for the hairdress. Um, so that's a sample on its own. I was told that it was good enough to not like just be in my sketchbook to like go on my actual final wall display. So I did that. And then I manipulated this picture. So as you saw in the first two one, I had photo manipulation on like my photography page. I've done it here. So I basically superimposed him onto different backgrounds which brings together the aerial photographs aspect and the portraits aspect and if you do explore two different areas by bringing them together it just does show that you've got that flow and that creative thinking to be able to push everything together and yeah being in innovative with your designs and take from different types of artists but still come out with something really coherent after i've done that I've looked at two other artists, so they're both on the same page this time. So again, I this artist number five and six, or six and seven, I think it's five and six. So first I looked at Howard Hodgkin, who is quite famous actually, his paintings were in the Ashmolean. They're like colonial portraits, um, painted be, between 1550, I guess that's 1850, and 18 no idea what this says this makes no sense oh okay he didn't paint them that makes more sense this guy collected them in the 1900s so basically he stole them off india uh, like they did in the colonial times so basically he stole them off india uh, and then put them in a museum welcome to my degree really nice and i thought it would celebrate them and I wanted some like actual Indian artist, but it's really sad that the actual artist didn't get the credit for this. The next one is called Javier Trellis, and I recreated, this is his work in the back, and then that's the one I recreated at the bottom. So again, that's a photocopy. My, a <laughs> My actual one is here framed it is what is it it's watercolor and acrylics on fabric and i really liked how that turned out again i was told that that should be on my final exhibition and not just a piece in my book which is why i photocopied it this artist actually is an indian artist Ugh. this is his work really really nice paintings and that is where I got the inspiration to do the wax resist that I've had on previous ones. And also this one. So this background is wax resist, taken inspiration from his headpiece. I'm sorry, I don't know like the actual Hindu term for that, but yeah. I then went on to sample, and like I said, I used these sampling pages and this is actually one of my friends <laughs> from sick form, uh, Dina. And you'll see a lot more of her in a second because I then used her as my model. So I took lots and lots of photos of Dee. Loads of pictures of her. Um, and yeah, more. Basically wrote about them, chose my favourite few. She was wearing her own traditional dress in this as well, which was really, really nice because it's absolutely stunning. And at this point, I was kind of convinced that I might make a sari or something, but in a way that I would have maybe her face on it and I'd embroider it all and it would all be different bits like the aerial photographs were. But yeah, that, that turned out to be a lot more work than I had the time for. Um, so... I went for like a flat piece and I'll show you that in a second. Here 
I manipulated the photos. So I've taken the background of some, made some of them black and white. I've got the actual photographs as well here. So I've got this one. These ones were in my final exhibition. This one here. And, oops, one more. That one. So this one is the most important because that's the photo that I used for my final piece. And photography is, like it's not crucial for A-level textiles, but it's just a whole other discipline that shows you've got the skills for, and even if you're not a good photographer, if you can show you can manipulate the photos and get a good composition, then that's a lot more marks. I've done it the other way around in A2. So instead of starting with samples, I've ended with them. So now I've got ooh, observational studies and samples. So that photo that I was talking about, I've drawn. And that is the golden Sikh temple that is in India because D is Sikh. So I've moved from Hinduism to Sikhism here. Um, and I've got another drawing. Oh, there. Okay, that is also D from my photographs. I know I said that this one was a lot more coherent and I didn't just have random things stuck on the end, but this is kind of stuck on the end. Anyway, I went to Manchester Art Gallery and basically photographed a lot of the colonial art and the stuff that's related to uh, India, like the East India Company and stuff, and used it at the end and just discussed it. Discuss the colonial history, discuss the impacts on the modern populations and the historic populations. Yeah, so I guess it shows educational insight and like knowledge of the provenance of the period that you're studying. But most of what I was doing moved straight on from those samples to my final piece. So I showed you this one. That was like a, a practice piece where I was mastering the techniques. I also did this of the Taj Mahal, which I made using free embroidery and, uh, what's it called? Dissolvable fabric. So I stitched onto dissolvable fabric in a, oh my gosh, what is it called? One of those circle clamp things that you put your fabric into. I also drew this as an extra piece, cheeky Taj Mahal, and a final piece, oh my god, it's like condensating because it's so warm, I hope that doesn't damage it, this is my final piece, can you see the condensate, so this is D, it's the drawing that I drew, you can see the condensation. Ugh. Should I get it out? I don't know. I don't know. It's really big. It's like, this is D. She is free embroidered, collaged, watercolored. The golden temple is here in the background. I've tried to incorporate the stuff which I took from my earlier pieces in the background, so I've like crocheted it and stuff, and basically tried to make the techniques coherent with what I saw at the start. That was, that was my final piece, I don't have anything else. This is only, you've only seen two of the projects that I did in textiles, so there's actually four, there's two in AS, two in A-level. For my other project at A-level, my like title was architecture, and wait, this is actually from my architect project, as is that drawing of the Taj Mahal. I don't know why they're so similar to my India project. It was purely by chance that I was drawn to India, I guess. But yeah, that's architecture because I went to Port Merion in Wales and really liked the different colours of the buildings and then got inspiration to do all the buildings different colours, basically, and work in bright colours. And I will put a picture of the dress that I made in this module right now. So yeah, um, I hope that you enjoyed looking at my work. 
Um, I totally get it if you've just skipped through slash watched two seconds and left and if you've left you won't be watching this now. Um, okay. Thank you for watching this. Um, I hope you found it interesting even if you're not doing textiles or art because this is like the same format I guess as art as well. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. I could probably talk through my other A-level subjects, not that they're very entertaining, and all of the A-levels have changed, but if you want me to discuss my experience, then fair enough. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so, because it lets me know that you want more continuous content. Not that I'm going to stop anyway, so you're getting it whether you like it or not, but yeah. Bye-bye!